We are here for justice. We are here to protect the innocent. We are exposing the predators. Welcome. Jack Reynolds spent more than 12 years in prison for molesting children in the 1980s. In the hopes of preventing more kids from becoming victims, he's agreed to share the techniques he used as a predator. How did you get them alone? Grooming. Um, I would check out their family situation. I would check out their clothing to see how well they were, you know, financially. I would check out their social interaction with other kids, you know. When we were on the ballparks or on the, on the gym floor, you know, I would make sure which ones I wanted to molest. I would give them special attention, congratulate them, talk to them when I know that I would never be allowed to talk to anybody else, you know, aside from everybody. I would give them the attention that a, an official is not supposed to give anybody. And it made them feel like, wow, he's paying me attention. You know, it, it is a direct form of grooming. Were there certain characteristics that you looked for in children before molesting them? In children, yes, but more I also looked at their families. If I thought the father was a threat, I would not approach the child. If I thought that the child had friends that he would tell, I would not approach him. If I thought the child had friends that were in the same capacity he was, I would approach him. For the simple fact that if I could molest him, I could lure him into believing grooming him into believing that he would enjoy it and therefore I could manipulate him into having his other friends come and be molested by me as well. So perhaps a, a, a child that doesn't really have a whole lot of friends, maybe not really a strong family, things like that. Yes, no spiritual values, um, weak in education, you know, needs help in many ways, um, even from uh, split parenting you know, has a mother who may be having problems with the family, you know, well here comes superhero in to help out, you know, wow, well thank you very much, no problem, you ever need me to take him away for the night so you can have a night out? No problem. It works. He also appeared on a news channel describing how he apparently copes with trying not to re-offend again. Whether this is a true statement made by him of course should be questioned. Now at 4.30 on the Now Indy, protecting your family, especially your children and grandchildren on Halloween, here's the sex offender registry. Now there's about 11,000 names statewide. A recovering sex offender says police efforts to attend mandatory meetings on Halloween is good for public safety. Call 6 investigator Rafael Sanchez joins me now live with more. Hey, Raf. Hey, Candace. We're talking about Jack Reynolds. He claims that he molested about 300 children before he was arrested. He says offenders who complain about being monitored, he says they need to stop complaining. I'm the one who put the sex offender label on me. I'm also the one who strives every day to remove that label. Jack Reynolds fears the temptation. So on Halloween, he plans to be in his bedroom. The Madison County man says his home is off limits. The man who says he was sexually abused as a child Here, says he molested about 300 children. His last victim in 1989. After serving 12 years in prison, he says he's focused on not hurting another child. And if I'm alone in a store and I have eye candy walking around me and I catch myself, I will push my cart and say no out loud. Okay, that warns me that I'm in a danger zone. And people around me, they can look at me and think I'm crazy, but I, I do not care. I know what I'm doing. Reynolds travels the country speaking with support groups. He also walks with permanent reminders tattooed to his wrists. I pray and I take my wrists and I read them aloud. Not today and not ever again. 
Reynolds says that all offenders must recognize their urges and must deal with them honestly. He says no lying. They must also ask for help when they need it, and they must also find a support group. And another way that he sort of modifies his behavior, Candace, he has all kinds of rubber bands on both arms, and when he feels that he has an urge to offend, he says he just snaps himself, just to remind himself not to do it, to minimize the risk to a child or to himself. And how effective are these mandatory meetings on Halloween? Well, here at Marin County, of course, it's the 12th year for the mandatory meeting, and last year they had a 100% attendance of those men wow. that and people required to come to the meeting. So it goes well. It'll be tomorrow night. They'll keep the offenders home while kids go trick-or-treating in Indianapolis. Great news. Rafael Sanchez, thank you so much.